Let's give Jesus the clap. Hallelujah.
going to magnify yourself in the name of Jesus. Lord, no matter what is ahead of anyone, no matter what any family is in, no matter the situations, Lord, as we present ourselves to you today, Father, magnify your promises in our life. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Good morning. God bless you. And welcome to church. Happy to welcome you. We must see you more welcome again. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. The Lord bless you. I believe God wants to expound something to us today. Uh, congratulations again on our 20th anniversary. It's a good one. And as we progress in life, we pray for more joy in Jesus' name. Today, I'm led to speak on dealing with depression and oppression. Dealing with depression and oppression. Um, I don't believe the fire leads to foundations. I don't believe God is born. I wasn't there when we asked, but like the choir said, whatever situation you are in, we end with God in Jesus' name. My text are taken from Psalm 42, verse 5 and 6. Psalm 42, verse 5 and 6. I want teenagers to also pay attention very well to what we are sharing this morning. Psalm 42, verse 5 and 6. The Bible says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Up thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Ammonites from the hill of Israel. Dealing with depression and oppression. This is the church. Depression is a state of being hopeless. Or, in some instances, depression is a state of being let down. Or, depression is a situation where you are feeling low, you are feeling down. Depression is the spirit of heaviness in action. You are going to, you know, things are moving all of a sudden. You feel low. It's called the spirit of heaviness. Depression is a state where you are cast down. Full of life, but you are in a time of you know you are down. You are in a season, your family is down. At least as far as your spirit being is, that is how you feel. Depression is the elder brother of discouragement. So it starts at discouragement. You are discouraged at this, you are discouraged at that, and then it leads to depression. That's why I say the elder brother. A feeling of despondency, a feeling of loss, loss of confidence. That's the question. Now, on the other hand, what is oppression? Because I said dealing with depression and oppression. Oppression is a state of being intimidated and harassed. That's oppression. Oppression comes from circumstances, oppression comes from men. Oppression comes from them. Intimidation and harassment must be dealt with spiritually and decisively. And that is why our topic comes to us to be dealing with depression and oppression. What are the causes or what do I consider as the manifestations of depression and oppression? Anyone under my voice this morning, any family under my voice, is this one that is discouraged, that is down by the power and the explosion of this war, you are coming out in the name of Jesus. What are the causes or what are the manifestations of depression and oppression? Number one, the fear of the unknown. And I won't talk too much about that, but please take as much note as you can. Go back to this video and watch it for reference for 
Fear of the unknown. When you are afraid of tomorrow, you don't know what will happen. You don't know what will happen after your students. You are, you are so confused. You don't know which visa you are going to get today. You are so confused about the future. You are afraid of the future. You don't know what will happen by next year, by next month, by 2024. You end up some policies coming and you are afraid fear of the unknown. Two, what brings depression and oppression? Dissatisfaction with your life. Self and things around you. Maybe as a result of all good expectations. So when you are dissatisfied with your life, when you are dissatisfied with the current state you are in, when you are dissatisfied with things, when you are dissatisfied with circumstances, these are the things that cause depression or oppression. Number four, when you are overwhelmed with the issues of life. For example, work. You can be overwhelmed with work. When the work is too much, you can live with depression. You can live with oppression. When you have relationship challenges, when your God bless you, Sunday school this morning, when maybe in marriage, suddenly you are just overwhelmed. Maybe you are a young adult, a youth, yet you get sorted with who to marry, or you are having issues in your courtship, in your relationship, it can lead to depression. When you have marital challenges, work challenges, relationship challenges, marital challenges. In our text today, that text was written. David, a man loved by God. A man God said, a man after my own heart. A man that was anointed. You know all about David. He was in a state of depression. He said, why are that cast down, O oh my soul? And why are that disquieting in me? In verse 6 of that chapter, he says, Oh my God. My soul is cast down within me. David, in the text, expressed to us the extent to which a man can be depressed. The extent to which you can just be down. A family can be down. A people can be down. And look, beloved, it tells us that anyone can be at that level at any point in time. Does not matter the anointing you carry. Does not it might even be after his success as we see as we, as we go on. So you can actually be depressed. You can be discouraged. But you need to deal with it. You need to deal with it decisively as a champion. And that's the reason the choir was singing to us. May it end the challenges. May it end in grace. I pray in the name of Jesus. Every situation that has made people be depressed. You will have the Jehovah that in the name of Jesus. Let me come to a familiar ground. A familiar ground about migration. When you migrate from one place to the other, can it bring depression? Yeah. Let me delve into a familiar ground. A familiar ground. Listen to what I want to start saying first. Listen. I said, from time. Destinies that left landmarks on the sand of time, they sojourn from one place to the other. I'll take that point again. From time, destinies that left landmarks on the sands of time, sojourn from one place to the other. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'll give you a challenge when you reach out today to read the book of Genesis, the whole of chapter 12, but I'll paraphrase for you. God told Abraham to migrate. It was God's decision. It was God's plan. And God said in Genesis 12, 1, He said, Abraham, Genesis 12, 1, leave the place of familiarity. Leave your family where you have comfort. Leave the nation you know, for a nation that will tell you, the people you know. That was God's plan. And let, let me put the joking man, Jaffa. Amen. So, Jaffa, which is normal, which our church is about. Follow me, please. By the time you read, by the time you go to verse 4, 5, and 6, he got to a 
a place called Shike, plain of worry. And God appeared to him again. And God confirmed again, I am the one that told you to be. Not minding that you are now in a plain place. You are in a place that is not familiar. You are, you are exposed. You are not secure. Animals are moving around you. You are in a plain field. But listen, I'm the one that asked you to migrate. Follow me, John. By the time we now get to verse 6, I think of 7, the first challenge happened to Abraham. God said, Move. Because he must have been depressed. And suddenly, what happened? There was famine in the land of God. There was famine. Which would bring discouragement. Oh, where I'm coming from, I have everything. I'm even living better in the place. I have everything. But now I'm here and there's famine. Look at what we are experiencing today energy crisis, food crisis, inflation, and impossible recession. Yes, it can bring discouragement. Yes, it can bring depression. But I'm telling you, it's a path in God and the job. Amen. Migration has never been easy. It was not easy on Abraham, neither was it easy on Isaac. Follow these thoughts. In Genesis 26, 18 to 26, Genesis 26, 18 to 26, he was speaking about Isaac. Isaac moved from one place to the other. He got to the land of Philistine. The first thing I need you to know is that the first challenge that faces anybody that migrates in my biblical times, in our time and the time to come, will be the first of accommodation. And I understand it. He puts up the tent. The Bible will say, and Abraham moved and built a tent. And God reminded me, I was a boy scout. So I did something when I was young that I was imagining why I did that. As a boy scout, they take us to camp. I was in camp six. When you get to a camp, it's in the bush. The first thing you will do for a whole day or two days, they will take us into the deep forest to go and cut huge timbers. That was the first place I learned how to huge timbers. You bring timbers, then you bring them to the camp. Yet there are no wild animals. I've been in the bush several as a young child. And then you will dig. And then they first make the structure of the of the tent, those tents you see. Then we go back into the bush. And then we go and get palm from and all that. And then we put it on it. And that's how we we'll live for three days, four days, and five days. Then I remember one night, we take turn to watch over the camp. Then we fell on my platoon to watch over the night. And my own watch. Everybody will be sleeping. 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. I started crying. Now, I'm going somewhere because you move. Abraham will move, will make a mess. Do you think it was easy, sir? It wasn't easy. God is speaking to you today. Don't be discouraged because it's a path. Or was it Isaac that I referenced? Genesis 26, 18 to 26. The Bible says he dug a well. I don't know if you know how to dig a well. I'm not talking with, uh, I'm not talking with uh, machine for gold, but we, at this point we have dug a well before. This is a well. They will bring these are men with muscles. They will not come, come to the ground, and what help them that they, will, they find what I said. They will settle around and they start digging. They start digging. They will bring it out. So somebody in dog, and after in dog, you find water, and the people in the area began to fight, and they said that belongs to us, and they took it away. Are you telling me they will not be discouraged? Are you telling me at that point that they won't be depressed a bit? He dug the first one, he dug the second one, he dug the third one. In the jeans, but they never gave up. They never give up. They kept digging. They kept digging. Even though there were several discouragements, he kept digging until they got to railroads. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever efforts that you are putting in, that struggle is coming towards thee. I pray that you will get your railroad in the name of Jesus. Was 
depressed, not on one location. I've given you one location. I'll give you several other locations. I'm speaking extensively to you by the leading of the Holy Spirit this morning. That as you join in love and you come across situations that discourage you, you come across events that make you depressed, you need to rise up and fight it so that you can get to your destination. I'll look at some case studies and then we'll close. I'll look at some case studies. Writing down 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9, and then verse 16. It says, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. So we do not lose heart. That's what is Paul. That is Apostle Paul. Performed miracles, but suddenly he got a stage in his life and see what happened to him. Many of us right here today may be struggling with our past. Fears, failures, broken relationships. But listen, I want us to know that all our favorite heroes, including Jesus Christ, passed through a season of discouragement, depression, oppression, and revolt. And they came out. I think we have all case study. Like I said, case study. I've spoken about Paul. Let's look at David again. I was I told you this story one time before. David learned from his beloved master, Saul. You know the story. Nothing can be depressing than that. But God told me I'm going to be king. How come this man is throwing that at me? In fact, it was that you know that poured all on my head. Amen. Because it was. Samuel that poured oil on his head and after that somebody was chasing him about to kill him. Nothing was more depressing than that. And he was going from one cave to the other, from one place to the other. Listen to this tough one. He became king. Then he was betrayed. Betrayed by who? By his son. His first son, Absalom. What could be more depressing than that? Sam. That your son, the one that you gave back to, planned a coup and ousted you. I don't know if you actually had this thing when I had most of that thing in Russia. Maybe it was a big thing I had. You know? But you know, for the blood of people that would have been lost. Amen? But who oh, there was a coup by his own son? I pray. Anyone under my voice that has been betrayed by associates, this season you are coming out and you are having full victory in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Come and say better, amen. Yeah. Right that we don't have time to read because we'll just say one prayer at the end of the service. David documented his seasons of depression and oppression in Psalm 42. That's what I read today in Psalm 32 and in Psalm 69. That was why I said it does not matter that you just came out of the victory. You can get into a point of depression again when challenges throw itself at you. Look at Job. I want to quickly also take the example of Job. Example of Job. Job was a faithful man. He, he actually faced a demonic attack. And that was why I went into oppression. Don't forget our topic dealing with depression and oppression. Job's case was a demonic attack. Demonic attack, sir, does not mean you are not righteous. In fact, Job was attacked. He lost everything because he was a righteous man. I am praying for somebody that can say a big and better amen. That every demonic agenda against your life. God will overturn them. Please follow me well. You may be in a state today. Yes, they are speaking about joy. I don't have joy. It may be a demonic attack. And that is why you must deal decisively with it. You must. Job, a faithful servant of God, faced with demonic attack, the greatest 
The money can take as far as I'm concerned in biblical history. He lost his wealth, he lost his family, he lost his health. He became sick in one day. Everything happened in one day. He started responding by urging him to join up in giving up on God. The wife gave up on God. Listen, just following what you just learned telling this morning. Whatever is any family under my voice is going through, please don't be the partner that will discourage your spouse from following that time. She said, Cause God and die. Job responded. He said, No, I know my redeemer. Leave it. Rest us dealing with depression and oppression. Although, when you read the book of Job, from chapter 1 to like chapter 42, there are about everything about the adversity, the oppression of the devil. But when you get to the last chapter, God turns the table around. The table turns around. The depression, the oppression, turn to victory. I pray in the name of Jesus. As we enter the last week of the month of June, we are 2023. That is in your life, you are having victory in the name of Jesus. God responds to David because as he delivered him from Saul, he delivered him from the Saul. God responds to Job was that he cried out and God restored him. A family of that voice shall be restored. The three case study I will give you for you to know that the Discouragement, a season of being down, is meant for champions. Like Pastor Godwin said, it is for bone crushers. Your challenge is you need to rise up and deal with it decisively. You are not in a position of regrets because you are only John. Elijah, that great prophet, Elijah didn't pray this exhausted prayer after a lengthy time. There was something that Elijah did. I, I did have time, you know. When you get to read 1 Kings 19, 1 to 18, the book of 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 to 18, you know there was a time. Elijah went to the priest. He said, God, kill me. I want to die. That, that was. He didn't pray that prayer as a result of long suffering, you know, because the day before, he just had victory on Mount Carmel. Remember the story? He just killed, is it 400 or 800? 800 prophets, Babala Wolves, you know, witch doctors, he just killed 800 of them and called out fire and there was rain. And this time, the wicked king was looking for him. The following day, because he ran for shelter, he started praying, Father, kill me. It wasn't a joke prayer. I don't know how many of you have been in a situation where you are desiring to die. That is the worst case of depression. I've been here once. In my journey in life. So years ago, I felt like that. In fact, I've been in that situation that I told a pastor friend, I said, I don't want to be a pastor with you. He said, No, God forgive me. Deep with depression. He was discouraged because his life was being chased. Who is chasing you? Who is chasing you that was to kill you? You know, you should think, give him to them. Who is under my voice this morning that is afraid to sleep? Because each time you sleep, you dream of being chased in your dream. Who is that person? And because of that, you are depressed and you are praying and praying. Hallelujah. Today, God is giving you victory in the name of Jesus. Number four. Let me look at that because I'm working with that. Number four, number five, rather. Let's talk about that. Naomi, you know the story of Naomi? He said, The Almighty God has made my life bitter. Stop calling me Naomi. I lost everything. He said, But when God was going to respond, God responded to her with a beautiful relationship. God gave her a wonderful daughter in law. You are listening to me this morning. You might be an answer to a, a mother in law. You are a wife. You might be an answer. To a mother in your crying and praying sorrow. 
You are listening to me this morning. You may be an answer as a son in law to a mother somewhere. You may be a grandmother. Listen to me here. And you are depressed. You are discouraged. You are under oppression. You think things are not moving the way you want. Listen to me. Now we was there. It's, she stayed with God and God sorted her out. I know that there are doctors out there and they will say, go for emotional, you know, go for coaching, go for this. It's good, but this is church. And our responsibility is to guide us in the light of Jesus Christ. Why I agree with seeking professional help? Prioritize the God solution to every situation. So God first before you pursue professional help. Maybe, and I'm going to slide, maybe there's anyone under my voice that is actually really moving into this crazy depression and you feel like giving up. Maybe somebody here, you know, because 2000 and it should be 2019. A medical doctor in Nigeria went to church on a Sunday, attended the service, drove his Honda CRV to Tommy uh, uh, Village and jumped. He just went to attend the last service. I don't know whether there's anybody in this to you or other matters like that, that you're about to take a decision. That's grievous. Some people that my better people be saying, ah, why am I going through this thing? I'll explain to you. It's a face. And you must rise up against that discouragement. You must fight it and you will win. In the name of Jesus, you will win. I said you will win. Why do I prioritize the God solution over professional? Because there is no trial and error with God. Don't get me wrong. Seek professional help. However, let God be it first. You engage you, and we'll see how we engage God. Get this early now as we bring this to a close. Depression and oppression are demons. They come and manifest by sending a thought into your heart. And as you begin to brood upon that thought, yourself, the king in you, begins to give way to that demon. You begin to doubt God. You begin to doubt his promises. You forget to pray before you that decision. You forgot all the good things he has done for you. One of the things the psalmist does any time that he's depressed is that he remembers what God has done on the time. He remembers. He remembers the strength comes to him. If truly, as a statement of truth, depression and oppression are demons, then what do we do with demons? We cast them out. Today, we cast out everything that has kept you discouraged in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I have good news for us. Psalm 30 verse 5. Psalm 30 verse 5. Good news. Say, for his anger and endurance of a moment, in his favor, his love, we may endure for a night. Job comes in the morning. All of you that are depressed of one situation or the other, I decree joy is coming your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive joy in the name of Jesus. Amen. No matter the circumstance that you are in, that has brought you to that state of depression and oppression, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Wait out. I'll write you with this depression and oppression. Three points and we'll be on our feet to pray. Number one, cast your body upon God. Now, this may 
Psalm 55 verse 22. Psalm 55 verse 22. Say, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be good. Listen, look at that scripture very well. Cast your body upon him, and he will sustain thee. Sustainers means through that process. Look at the choir's administration to us. That challenge, it will sustain you. It will not let you to be crushed. Then, as it sustains you and empowers you, it makes you to rise into joy and you have victory. Casting your body upon the Lord, there are times I must be truthful to you. Because our God is not a magician. He's a miraculous God. And our God follows processes. You will say, ah, you pray this month. You did three days fasting on the water. It seems as if God decided. One thing I want to tell you the Lord is that God may be silent, but God is working. Amen? It is the magicians and the juju people that you go to and they give you a temporary solution. So you are temporarily here. What God does is that He takes you through that fire and you come out shining, and then you have victory power. Cast your heart down to all the challenges you have in the third path, and you stay with God and you have victory. After that victory, the, the challenge comes back. That particular one, cast your heart That is what you need to cast your body upon the Lord. Whatever is bringing discouragement, which is the younger brother of depression, to you, put it before God. God, this is it. Put it there. Put it there. Put it there. Second, number two, we have challenge all negative thoughts with the word of God. Every negative thought challenge it with the word of God. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 22. Proverbs 4, verse 22. For they are life unto those who find them and hell to their flesh. If you look at verse uh, 21 of God, say, My son, give attention to my word. This is how I do it. When I'm facing a particular challenge, I purposely go and look for scriptures that speak to that challenge. And Bible gets will has made it easy for us. Google has made it easy for us. Let's say it's a health challenge. Just go and Google. Bible verses for healing. So when that health challenge comes your way again, you take those scriptures and you begin to speak it. You begin to speak it. Because the word of God, they are like to those who find it. Let me tell you one of the issues that I used that work. I was looking for a consultant somewhere here in the UK when I first came. And that was the weekend we were discussing, those of you that were in coverage that day, we were talking about lift up your heads, holy gates, and be irritable, be everlasting doors. And God spoke to him. He said, one of the gates that was open to you is the gate of career. So I took that scripture and I was speaking it. And I was calling the name of the organization. I was decreeing. I said, lift up your hands. I actually went to their building. And I fought the building. And I said, this organization, lift up your hands to me. Be lifted up. Hear my last few thoughts. That I will come to this. We will discuss the best things sometime in the future. The gates open because the word of God is too powerful. It works. Depression. Anything you are not happy with, you are not happy with your career, you can change. You are not happy with the load they are giving for you at work, it can change. You are not happy with the situation, it can change. You are down on a particular matter, it can change. Confront it with the word of God. Because it is when we are seated, I told you it's a demon. I've watched a lot of people. The demon will come and sit in your by the right ear and will be speaking those negative things. You see yourself? You see? You see what you have put yourself into? You see? It's bad, it's this, it's this, it's this. It's thoughts. 
It will not become like the top. Then, if you are very strong spiritually, the positive, which is the Holy Spirit, you always say, it's not like that. But you know, the, the Holy Spirit is quiet. He speaks words. It's the devil that is the kind of person. He talks like 10 times. So you will hear negative things 10 times. But you will hear God once. Quiet. Challenge all things that are putting you under the pressure with the word of God. I mentioned a number of them at the beginning. Is it the fear of your own? Is it dissatisfaction with your life and things around you? Is it a feeling of rejection or abandonment? Is it that you are overwhelmed with the issue of life? Is it that things are not working the way you plan? Listen, John is waiting for you. Deal with that situation in the word of God. And finally, point number three, how to deal with depression and oppression. Believe in God and believe in yourself. And that was what David did in Ziklag, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. He was discouraged and then he was greatly distressed. He was depressed. Some of the men that are not strong would have said, I'm just going to commit suicide. And he said, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. He will remember that story from verse 7. He merely encouraged himself in the Lord. Say yes, my redeemer lives. God is with me. God has brought me here. Will not cause me to fail. He said, "Bring me the earring and the tune. So he went to God. That is what I will call today fasting and prayer. You don't need to be with anybody. You go yourself to God. Bring me the Bible. Let me look at the pages of the Bible. What should I do? And God said, "Pursue." God may have told you in your own case. God may not say for soon. God may say, change your strategy. But it's important to call on the glory and to by faith. Believe in God and believe in yourself. Two scriptures that I want you to meditate on throughout the week. Two scriptures that are close that I want you to meditate on throughout this week. First scripture, first Corinthians 10, 13. First Corinthians 10, verse 13. He says, there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you will be able to bear it. Second scripture that I want you to meditate on as you go this week, for you to know that you are coming out with joy out of that depression. Romans 8, 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Let me be your confession throughout this week. It says, and we know that all things work together for good, for them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Rise with Jesus. Dealing Depression and confession. Lift your hands towards this altar as I engage with you in the covenant. Lift your hands towards this altar to the secret. Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus, standing on the covenant, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Standing on the covenant to have the redeemed Christian church of God. And I pray for all this life, including me, that every state of depression and oppression we are in, release victory now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I command, we may be a girl for the night, but Chuck comes in the morning. But stand next to me, she will be dwelling in Chuck in the name of Jesus.
Bible study as well last week. So if you can really join physically, that would be great. If not, you can join online. God will continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. And lastly, do we have anyone coming here for the first time? It's your first time here. Yeah, just wait. It's your first time.
And that is the gene we for two hours just to prepare the team for one AM. So for the prayer conference, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., then we will have a new gene. Then on Saturday, we will have another session, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. So please let's put this in mind. And then the guest minister will just hang around to add the Thanksgiving service for us and to be a time of celebration. The theme of the conference is called the day. Now this conference, we are getting materials, manuals, and teaching, and it's going to be um, 20 pounds. 20 pounds. It's going to be 20 pounds. You can bring the 20 pounds physically to church. You can hand it over to Brother to who will be project managing this in group. Or you can transfer it to the church accounts and call it prayer conference so that we can get your money out for you. It's 20 pounds for the money and teaching materials. Don't forget, Thursday, 6 30 to 9. Friday, 7 to 10, then 10 30 to 1 a.m. Saturday, 2 to 6. And then Sunday will be at the service. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. That's the thing that is ahead of us. I, again, we cannot keep thanking ourselves for the success of the anniversary. Everybody was working, the men, the women, the children, we were arranging the chairs, putting, I don't know what the time call that. That's what we used to cover the chair. You know, we wear clothes, we wear clothes in the chair. Chair covers, okay, that sounds good. Um, the children were putting the chair covers for us. Everybody was just brilliant. Let's celebrate ourselves again. Let's celebrate ourselves again. We want to do one. We want to be fast. We want to back. The authorities in the world were thankful. They are grateful. The police were grateful. And we continue to give them that opportunity in this place. And the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. I want to believe the team that's meeting this week, this Friday, if that possible, because of our prayer conference, you can't do this. You get the one. Because of our prayer conference, you can't do this. So we move it forward. And the Lord bless us. Let's rise on our feet. And I want you to intentionally commit your faith to the hand of God. This is the last week of God of you. Talk to God and say, Father, I commit this week into your hands. As I go, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your hand rest upon me. Let your presence be upon me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Open your eyes. So you open your eyes and look at me. Something happened in my office. Because I need you to pray. And that's why you don't do the prayers. There's something that was recruited for an assignment. We've done the assignment, but our contract is not over yet. And because of the speed with which we worked, I don't see only you. I did a major part of it. It was signed up by the board on Wednesday. And once the sign, you know, the whole organization was happy and all that. And my, I was standing there at the top. Called me on Thursday and said, Charles, you're going to terminate the contract of that person. That is there anything that you think, he said it's a commercial decision. That was the first thing he told me. He said it's a commercial decision. And I understand what is a commercial decision. It means, a decision has been made. That Lord, what I do not end to say, what I'm not thinking about, what would destabilize me? What would destabilize my life? What would destabilize my journey? Shall not happen to me in that name of Jesus. This week, use your mouth to put your angels to work. This week will be a beautiful week for me. This week will be breakthroughs for me. This week, there will be light on my 
my path. This week, I will progress. This week, in the name of Jesus, I will find help. I will find help in right places. This week, my health shall be stronger. This week, in the name of Jesus, there will be good news in our church. There will be good news in this church. There will be good news in our church. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Single pastor has gone back to Nigeria just to take care of the house because when my mom went to be with the Lord, we did tidy up the house. So she traveled so I can tidy up her stuff and all that and take a decision on how to put the house to use. She'll go back in this week and we pray that she will meet us with joy and joy in the name of Jesus. Father, you have visited us this morning. I pray that light will shine on our paths in the name of Jesus. This week, God, it shall be a week of no calamity in this church in the name of Jesus. It shall be a week of good news in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's say the grace together. I want to go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of my life, and I will enjoy the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's say our confession wants to go. I will make